Following the presentation of a bill for an act to amend the University Teaching Hospitals Act, laws of the Federation by Honorable Okodiko Jonathan, a member representing Isoko North, Isoko South, Federal Constituency of Delta State during an interview with press, stated that the bill is to alleviate the suffering of Isoko people, address medical tourism, unnecessary death, provide employment, and others. He stated that the Soko people have been marginalized and oppressed, urged the federal government to look at the bill objectively. My name remains Ukodiko Jonathan Ajiriogene, representing the good people of Isoko North and South Federal Constituency. Mr. Speaker, naturally, and my honorable colleague, it is a natural said that medically certified good health is the greatest available things that any nation can cleave to have. Mr. Speaker, as we all know, and as you all know, health is one of the most critical aspects that every good nation would desire to have. And Mr. Speaker, if this bill is passed, there are a lot of benefits that this bill will draw to our people and to Nigeria as a whole. If this bill is being passed for second reading, it will create job opportunities for the training of medical doctors, nurses, and other critical professionals in the medical health sector. Mr. Speaker, if this bill is passed for the second reading, it will be the first of its kind in Delta State. And uh, addition to some fuels that exist in the Niger Delta. If this bill is passed for second reading and this school is established, it will contribute to the GDP of the country by reducing the health tourism that is going on in this country. Mr. Speaker and my honorable colleague, if this bill is passed for the second reading, it will also improve the numbers of intake of our youth into federal universities or various teaching hospitals that exist in the country. As you all know, Mr. Speaker, if you look what is happening today, if you look at the jump uh, uh, records, you will see that the job does uh, admit more than 50% of the numbers of students, intended students that apply to study in our various health institutions. So by passing this before the second reading, it will also improve on that. Mr. Speaker, there are a lot of benefits that we accrue to the Federation and to my constituency is the bill is passed. Mr. Speaker and my honorable colleague, at this point, kindly permit me as a graciously invite, seek and solicit each and every one of us to passionately direct our warmness of love and gratitude toward my constituents, the good and hospitable people of Isoko North and South, constituency of Delta State, in support of this bill for each second reading that we shall create warmness, love, sense of belonging, to my constituents. Thank you and God bless you. Yeah, you know, the bill is all about uh, providing quality health for our people and for the nation as a whole. Um, the bill is a very important bill and it's a bill that my constituents are looking forward in passing. And it's a bill that even the data state as a whole are looking forward to do. You know, because if you look at the whole data state as a whole, there is no federal teaching hospital in any way in data state. Most of our people, they travel as far to Benin City, as far to uh, Port Harcourt, whenever they have complicated issues or whenever they have some health challenges. And, you know, when they have that referral, right these days, you know, to travel from uh, Isoko to Benin, before now, it's, it takes around about one hour, 30 minutes. But because of the bad road, it will take, you know, three hours, four hours. And just imagine 
maybe a pregnant woman that cannot get the real medical care, you know, and is being referred to a specialist hospital. Before you get there, you just imagine what might have happened. You know, we are talking of other uh, ailments that need referral, you know, to those kind of long distances. And before, most of the time, before, you, before they get those guys to that place, we might have lost them. You know, so the bill is one of those things to check, you know, to check some of all those uh, unnecessary deaths, occurrence of death that happens all the time. On that, it will, when you look at this country presently now, you know, you can see that there are a lot of people, you know, a lot of our, 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 our youths, you know, especially the young ones, that are looking forward in attending, uh, uh, looking forward in being medical doctors, looking forward in being uh, any of all those health professionals. And because we have very limited teaching hospitals in the country, the numbers of intake are very, very few compared to the numbers of people that are applying to be trained as, medical, as a medical doctors or as, you know, as nurses or as, you know, radiologists, you know, various uh, medical professionals, you know. And uh, because of that, a lot of our people, they could not have access, they could not get admission into some of other schools. If that school take off, happen to take off and we happen to have a teaching hospital, whether I like it or not, we'll be able to admit other Nigerians, more of Nigerians into the teaching hospitals. You know, another issue that you look at there is the issue of medical tourism. You know, these teaching hospitals are specialist hospitals that are supposed to take care of some specialist amen, you know, that have to, to improve uh, our health care system, you know. And if that school is established, it will take care of people around Delta State, uh, Biasa State, right now Biasa State doesn't have any teaching hospital, Biasa State, even some people from even Onitsha, you know, from Anambra State and all the neighboring states, you know, from Onitsha, from Asaba, from Onitsha to Isoko, it's about one hour's drive. You know, instead of somebody to go to Bini or go to uh, Inugo Teaching Hospital, it is closer to, to them than uh, those places. Because that road is already an express road way, you know, that is easier to access and so on and so forth. You know, so the bill is a very important bill. And all our, the, the speaker and all our colleagues agree that, look, the bill is a very, very important bill. And let me tell you something also. That bill will be able to give the people of Isoko a sense of belonging, that they belong to the federal government, they belong to the Federation of Nigeria. Isoko as a whole, you know, we are one of the ethnic groups in Delta State. And we are the highest onshore producer of oil and gas as far Nigeria as far Nigeria is concerned. I'm talking of Nigeria as a whole, not even only Delta State. You know, and they have been producing oil in that place since 1956. To date, I can tell you that if you look at this so today, there is no presence of federal government in Isoko as a whole. The only presence of government in Isoko are institutions of oppression. Military, military, uh, not even barrack, they are not there. You know, military, uh, uh, well, they are not even bases. You know, military police stations, you know, they, those kind of institutions that they don't, they, 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 they are not really adding any value to the life of our people. Even the oil companies that are operating in that place, they are, not, they are not doing anything for our people. There is nothing that you can see that these people that have been produced, that have been contributed to the GDP of this country, this is what they are able to get. Our people don't get employment in the oil industry. Our people don't get the uh, contract in the oil industry. There is nothing that our people get from the industry. You know, so, so when you look at it, we have been marginalized. We have been oppressed. We have been, we have been pushed to the corner. And you know, Isoko Man is a, a peace-loving person. We are peace-loving people. We don't believe, believe in militancy. We don't believe in criminality. We don't believe in, you know, in fighting in order for us to get what is due to us, that are plunging this country into confusion, into problems. But they forget to know that it's not everybody. But if we don't do something fast and rescue this nation, to work, you know, it is so painful that 
things are the way they are. You know, like our president, our current president, you know, he was an advocate of devolution of power. We believe that what some of our colleagues were trying to do right now, to push for reform, to push for amendment of the constitution. We believe that by the time we do that and it get to his table, he will be able to work on it. He will be able to sign it off. That is the only thing. If he cannot do anything for this country, if he can do reform, proper reform, an amendment of the constitution to devolve more power and let the state and the region develop on their own, it will be the greatest sacrifice that they made for this country. And I pray and we are praying for him. And we believe that he will do it. For prosperity's sake. Some of us, we are lovers of this country. We have no other place to go. For me, I have no other place to go. This country is a great country. This country is a lovely country. To me, I tell people that Nigeria is love. Africa is love. It's only this country that when you see your brother hungry, you'll call him, come, come and take food. Travel to abroad. You can be hungry. Nobody cares. We're able to achieve that because of the love that we have to each other. So I believe that things will continue to get better. Honorable Jonathan disclosed plans to bring on a bill on reform of the Constitution expressed urgent need for the reform, especially for regions to operate on their own to aid security, boost economy, as the region will be strong and contribute to the center. He says constitution is the bedrock of Nigerian pains. Track up. Speaking on how he's helping his constituency cushion the effects of inflation, the lawmaker stated training for sustainable livelihood monthly stipends, and also shared plans for job creation, improved education, and others. Comfort Olayinka, DCTV News.